This is John Cola with OKRaw.com. I have another exciting episode for you, and this is one that's been requested by some of you guys out there. Hey, John, what kind of coconuts do you eat? You know, which ones do you use? Which ones should I use? Which ones are the best to, you know, consume on a raw foods diet? And what's the difference between them? But more importantly, how the heck do you get them open? So in this video, we're going to cover all that information and more. The first thing I want to talk about is that coconuts are one of my top favorite foods, probably my number one favorite food. Like if I could be stranded on a desert island, I'd probably choose the coconut because it can be used in so many different ways uh, besides just the water and the meat. And depending on the age of the coconut, the water uh, is either sweeter or not as sweet. That also depends on the variety of the coconut. Uh, plus also the meat can be very jelly thin or uh, really thick. Uh, the thicker it is, the fatter it is, the more saturated fats in there. In addition, when the coconut has the full nut like we're seeing here, and it actually the conditions are right, it actually starts to sprout a little baby palm. And then inside turns like this like like fluff ball, kind of like angel food cake. And that's actually in Hawaii, they call that queen's candy because you're actually eating the coconut sprout. And the coconut sprout basically forms from the fat inside. That fat is actually for the seed to germinate and then uh, the energy for it to grow until it actually sends out roots into the ground and then grows into a nice big tropical tree. So first, let's talk about the coconuts. The coconuts are a tropical plant. So, you know, I think there's one plant in Southern California uh, alive, but you know, they don't like the frost, but it's not producing. But for most cases, you're gonna have to go to maybe to like Mexico, South Florida, potentially South Texas, um, or the Caribbean, maybe Hawaii, to have some fresh coconuts. Now, the best coconuts, in my opinion, are the ones right off the tree because you could harvest them yourselves and you know exactly what happened to them. Now, when you're gonna climb a tree, you wanna actually get to the ones in the tree that are uh, green, orange, or yellow because those are the young ones and those are the ones you wanna consume because they're the del most delicious ones and they're rich of nature's purified water. And to me, that's the main benefit of the coconut. You know, many of you guys may have and maybe still be drinking tap water. I would at least encourage you guys to filter it. But the best water on earth are filtered by the plants, you know, besides carrots and apples and even watermelon filtering your water, which I always encourage you guys to eat a diet rich in fruits and also vegetables, which also filter your water. To get your water, another way to do it is through the coconuts, through coconut water, which is pretty much just clean water full of electrolytes and other trace minerals in there. Uh, so yeah, coconut by far, number one source of the best water on earth. So anyways, we're talking about the coconut. You wanna get the young ones because they are much more full of water and they have a little bit of meat, uh, jelly meat or spoon meat that's uh, actually rich and delicious. And once again, the more mature the coconut gets, the higher the saturated fat content. So anyways, this is what a coconut looks like after it drops off the tree and they're brown. And these aren't the ones you necessarily want because these ones actually get kind of old and they actually this one is actually dried out because actually I brought this back from uh, Florida with me one time. But it's a good demonstration to show you guys actually what a coconut looks like. And these guys, you know, they can be actually a lot larger the size of a football. Now, if we shave this all down, the brown one like this, what we're going to get is we're going to get a coconut that looks like this. This is the actual nut on the inside and the, the husk is all around it. Now, they use the husk at, in like gardening purposes. It's actually called coconut core. It actually soaks up its weight in water and it, it's very good to hold water in your soils. So I like that a lot. Um, so yeah, this is the more mature coconut as an example to show you guys. So what we're looking at here are the different kinds of coconuts that may be available to you. You know, some of these, some of these you guys have, may have never seen in some parts of the country. Frankly, you probably aren't going to get some of these coconuts because they're specialty items. You know, most people think of the coconut, they think of the brown coconut. Now this is the mature coconut and this is my least favorite type of coconut. These guys, once again, are the old ones and when you shake them, Hopefully you hear water, uh, you know, splashing around. And if you don't hear anything shaking around in there, don't buy it because then there's no water and that's a sign that it's probably bad and you don't want to buy it. When you pick up any coconut to buy, you want to hear as much water as possible. So by shaking this and hearing it, I could tell this is probably about up to here in water. So it's maybe three quarters full of water. So that's definitely a good sign. Now when choosing a coconut, you want to look for any kind of discoloration. You know, by the eyes, it may be black, and this is sometimes normal, sometimes not. And you're just going to have to get to learn how to pick a good one out. You know, number one, by shaking. Number two, it should be heavy for its weight, not too light. You know, the lighter it is, it may not be as good. Uh, so, you know, when I go to a store, I look at all the coconuts, and I number one, if they're selling them by the each, I try to pick out the largest one that has the most water, because the water is what I'm really after. 
These guys are the most mature coconuts and they have the thickest meat and the least amount of water and the water tends not to taste so good. Sometimes they even put labels on these, the water's not for drinking, you're just, just supposed to use the meat. And that's probably because the water is going bad because they're really old. It's also very important to go to a market or a supermarket that actually has a high turnover rate for the coconuts. What does high turnover rate mean? That means they sell a lot of them. So if you go to your standard American supermarket, you know, most Americans aren't buying coconuts, so they're sitting there a lot, and you can't really tell when these are bad like uh, strawberries go bad. So, you know, the produce guys don't rotate them out enough. So you want to go to an Asian market or a Mexican market where they sell them a lot, and you know they're always getting constantly fresh ones in there. So that's going to assure you a better probability of getting a fresh one. Another thing you can do is talk to your produce manager and have them order a case for you. And you know, when they order a case for you, they'll get the case in fresh and then they'll, you know, give it to you so that you can get a lower price but also get fresher coconuts that'll hopefully be better. Next, let's talk about organic versus non-organic coconuts. Most coconuts you find are conventional coconuts because it's very hard to find organic coconuts. I think there are some imported organic brown coconuts you know, and sometimes you could actually buy direct from the grower who are growing organically. Now, in my opinion, uh, most growers of coconuts are not spraying any pesticides and hopefully they're not using any herbicides either uh, because coconuts really don't have any pests that get them and they're so high up in the trees, I don't know, they shouldn't hopefully be spraying any herbicides down below the trees either. But they may be using synthetic fertilizers, which may or may not be a concern up for you. But I believe there's no pesticide residues or anything on the coconut when you buy them. That being said, uh, the young coconuts are actually treated prior to coming in, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So for the most part, I buy conventional coconuts because I believe they're fairly safe, it, it, with the caveat of the Thai coconut that we'll talk about. So these are the most mature coconuts, and I don't necessarily recommend them. What we're going to move into next is the white coconuts, and maybe these are like the uh, adolescent coconuts. These are not quite as old as these guys, but not quite as young as the Thai coconuts either. Now when you shake this, once again, you should hear it full of liquid and it's a good sign if you can shake this and you don't hear anything sloshing around because it's, it's totally full of liquid. And it's the liquid in the coconut that I'm after. So that's why I like these guys. So uh, both these guys actually, for me, these guys are imported from Mexico and, and from my research, these are actually not treated. They're just actually taken off the tree, uh, you know, in its whole form in the husk. They dehusk them and then send them on in. So uh, I've had these guys actually uh, go moldy on me. You know, they'll have green spots near the eyes and, you know, uh, sometimes they'll have cracks in them. So you want to get a coconut that doesn't have any cracks and no mold spots. I buy these by the case in general or pick them out by hand at the store right when they put them out. So I get a really good one. So once again, go to a store that has a high turnover rate or buy them by the case to assure you're going to get the freshest ones. Next, we're going to get into the Thai coconuts and the Thai coconuts are the youngest coconuts. Now you might be thinking, John, how come this coconut looks different than this coconut? Well, if you remember when I talked earlier about it, all the coconuts on the tree look like this. They don't look like one of those guys. And if they had to ship these coconuts like this in the husk, uh, you know, they couldn't fit as many as a case. So what they do is actually they carve this actually down. And uh, what you're looking at now is the coconut like in this orientation. The bottom of this coconut is actually the, uh, the stem end and the top is the crown end. And uh, they basically just shave off a lot of this husk so that it's easier for shipping. Also, when the coconut is young like this, you know, this young, uh, when they're this old, the shell is actually rather hard. The eyes are formed so that it's a protective barrier. But when the coconut's this young, the eyes are really soft and more permeable, and it needs this uh, around it to protect it because the shell can be actually fairly thin. Now these coconuts are a different variety of coconut, much like we have Fuji apples and Granny Smith apples and Gala apples and Honeycrisp apples. Uh, this is a special uh, dwarf Thai coconut variety that all the coconuts uh, in general in this style are sweet coconuts, whereas other coconuts, you know, maybe any random variety that are unnamed or you may not know or they probably don't know either, that are just growing trees and then they're harvesting them and shipping it to you. So for that reason, these guys are always going to be sweeter than one of these guys so if we're talking about sweetness these guys are the sweetest these are the next sweetest and then the brown ones are probably not sweet at all in addition we could talk about the meat so the meat on these guys are usually relatively very thin called spoon meat and the meat on this is more thick and then the meat on this is the thickest of all now the fatter the meat the thicker the meat the higher the fat content because once again the coconut palm is making the uh, fat in there to feed itself once it drops the seed and the seed germinates. If you want the high fat content, then of course you're gonna wanna get a brown coconut. If you don't want the fat content, then you're gonna get a one a Thai coconut. And if you want something in the middle, 
get this. <laughs> so that's the Thai coconut. These are from imported from Thailand. Uh, they usually don't come from anywhere else from what I've seen. They have the husk on them. Now this uh, is wrapped in plastic, so I don't generally take off the plastic because what they do is they carve these coconuts down and they dip them in a solution of fungicide and sulfites. So many of you guys may know that some wines contain sulfites, or actually most wines contain sulfites, and some people have bad or allergic reactions to sulfites. So the question is, does the sulfites and the fungicide called thymobenzol, which is also sprayed on non-organic bananas or conventional bananas and also actually used uh, as a drug for some people to like deworm you, does that actually get through the husk and then into the through the nut and then into the water itself? Well, you know, I have seen somebody who's done some testing and that basically said no. And I've had a friend that was really sensitive to actually consuming sulfites and she would get asthma really bad. And for the most coconut she's ever drank, she's never got any hint of asthma. But one time she had one and she got some chest tightening. So for the most part, I feel they're safer. But of course, I'd rather go for these guys that I know are not dipped. That being said, I do rotate what I'm eating on a regular basis. So sometimes I'll have the young ones, sometimes I'll have the middle-aged ones, which is my staple. I tend to buy more of these than these guys. And then uh, rarely I'll get the uh, brown ones for the thick meat if I want to use the meat in a recipe. Now I guess next what we're going to do is going to go ahead and show you guys actually how to open uh, the two different kinds of coconuts. So this is one kind, the Thai coconut. And uh, these two coconuts are pretty much open the same way. So uh, first, I guess we'll start off with the Thai coconut. So I have a variety of tools, you know, from a, a cleaver here and a standard like chef's knife. And, you know, some people will just take this tool and, and hack this thing up and the water will spray everywhere. And it's quite dangerous because you're, you're hacking with a big heavy duty knife. And I have another video on YouTube that I'll go into detail on different ways you can open the coconut. And I've even opened a coconut with a butter knife. Uh, I actually don't like using the cleaver like this. I like using a standard chef's knife like this. I'll put the coconut on its side and we'll just basically uh, carve off the husk. This is very simple and easy. You know, take your time. You're going to be at no risk for injuring yourself if you do this properly. And that's another reason why I like this method because it's safe. I don't want to lose any of my digits over a coconut. So now what we're looking at is we're looking at a little pyramid type thing and what we're particularly looking at is the bottom of the coconut. So if you line these uh, guys up, they pretty much look similar because this is the bottom once again. And uh, on the bottom, there's three main veins. There's a vein here, vein here, and a vein here. There's like a quarter of the coconut here, a quarter of the coconut here, and then there's a half right here. So I like to go about an inch down from the part that you can see the half, and right about there, we're gonna stick the knife in. And we're just gonna uh, back our hand up to about the end of the knife, and we're just gonna one fast, hard tap. All right, so when you do that, the knife should stick in, and then you're gonna lower the level of the knife down to be parallel with your table and just uh, rock your knife. And then you're gonna see we got this uh, top off the coconut. You could then, uh, you know, put a straw in here. Mmm, and drink that delicious coconut water. Now, another reason why I like opening the coconut like this is because now we have a nice large hole that we could put a spoon into or use an ice cream scoop because they're very thick and they won't bend like your spoon. I've bent many spoons in the young coconuts so that you can get the young meat out. I usually blend up the meat and the water with one vanilla bean and that makes a vanilla a shake like no other. So delicious. So some other uses for the young coconut meat is I like to actually take it and put it in the blender with mostly coconut meat, some dates, and a vanilla bean, and then a little bit of coconut water just to blend it up. Got to be put in the Vitamix to break that coconut down into a delicious vanilla pudding. Oh, it's so good. Uh, another way you can use it is you could actually just take the meat out, put it in the dehydrator, and my friend calls that white chocolate because of the sweetness and also the fat content. Tastes so good like that as well. Now, some people actually take the meat out and will freeze it and then use it at a later date. I don't necessarily recommend doing that, although you can because I don't like to freeze the foods that I eat. I like to eat as many things as possible, as fresh as I possibly can get them. Next, I'm gonna show you guys actually how to open up the either the white coconut or the brown coconut. And I'll show you guys actually on the brown one since it's easier, but I'm actually gonna open the white one today. Uh, every coconut basically uh, is known as a monkey face. And if you look here closely, you can see the two eyes and the mouth. Now, how can you tell if it's an eye or a mouth because there's three holes? Well, the eyes simply have little ridges like we have eyebrows. It has little eyebrows. So if you look closely, you could feel and also see the little ridges that make the brow up on the coconut. 
So those are the two eyes, and then this is the mouth, doesn't have a brow, and generally it's larger. So on the mouth is the softest hole, and that's the one you actually want to go through to actually get the water out. So we're going to go through, and uh, once again, these are the two brows, these are the two eyes. We're going to go through the mouth right here. And uh, you could stick a screwdriver through there, or a chopstick, or whatever. But I got a special tool, and this is normally used for opening the young coconuts. But you can also open up only through the mouth, not through the eyes, of the more mature coconuts. And this has a little uh, like knife blade on it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to simply stick this into the coconut and turn and spin it. And it actually just goes right in. We pull it right out. And then uh, what's left inside here is a little plug that you can then pop out just like that. And you can go ahead and put that in your compost bin. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and stick a straw in there. Mmm. Most delicious. Now, I prefer the taste of this coconut over this coconut. And a funny story I want to give you guys is actually, right, when I got into raw foods and was eating a lot of coconuts, I was getting a lot of the Thai coconuts, you know. And I was like, okay, these are the coconuts that are good. I like the flavor because I got used to them. Then I went over to Hawaii. And, uh, you know, I got a coconut off the tree and I drank it. And I'm like, these things suck. They're not as good or as sweet as the Thai coconuts because my whole reference point was the Thai coconuts. Now, the Thai coconuts are picked, put on a boat, shipped over, and then you get them. So they're not quite as fresh as the one right off the tree. And nowadays, actually, I literally feel the energy in the foods like the life force. So these guys aren't quite as full of life force as fresh ones, although every fresh one you get is going to taste completely different. You know, uh, with the Thai coconuts, most of them always taste the same. So I like diversity and new taste sensations. And some coconuts in nature, they'll be like champagne -y. Some will taste like, I don't know, like water. Some will taste a little bit sweet. I mean, they'll be a little bit bubbly if they're starting to ferment on the, on the, tr on the palm. Oh, they're just so good. So nowadays, the freshest ones are the bestest ones. Now, let's talk about storage for a minute. Uh, the Thai coconuts, you know, uh, they're once again shipped over and they're not frozen and then thawed out because if they were, they'd actually crack and I have done that before. How long will they last? Well, in general, these guys you could buy and I've stored these for up to two weeks, three weeks in my fridge if you get them fresh. I mean, the problem is they could have been sitting at the grocer uh, for, you know, one or two weeks before you even bought them and then they might have a week, you know, in your fridge. So in general, I'd store them for up to a week, but you want to eat them as soon as possible. Uh, for these guys, for the brown ones, I mean, they'll easily store a month in my opinion. And these guys outside the refrigerator will store maybe two weeks, but you got to make sure they're dry. And if you're getting them a little bit wet, they need to dry out because if you're, if they're still moist, then they may uh, mold on you. So that's for the storage. Next, I'm going to go ahead and drink the rest of this water and I'll show you guys actually how to get the uh, coconut open and then get the meat out as well. Now I've got all the delicious coconut water out of that and we're going to go ahead and break this in half. So, you know, many people may put this in like a plastic bag and then hit it against the ground or shatter it in a million pieces, but you know, that just gets really messy. So what I like to do instead is uh, open it the easy and quick way. <laughs> so what you're going to need for this is a standard like uh, cleaver and uh, we're not going to use a blade edge of the cleaver because it actually could damage your blade. We're going to use the back edge. You want a nice heavy one. Now what we're going to do is actually we're going to basically pretend this is the earth. And the top of the earth is where you put the hole in, and the bottom of the earth is down here. And along the equator, where the equator would be, we're going to want to tap the coconut to break its shell. So we're going to turn it on its side, and we just take the knife and tap and turn, tap and turn. We're going to turn it and tap it, turn it and tap it. And when you do this a couple times, what you're going to see is that it's going to basically uh, make a circle, and it's going to come out in half for you. So you can see the meat in this coconut is actually fairly thick. It's getting uh, more thicker on par with this guy. Now I want to talk about the meat for a second. What, John, what do you do with the old mature meat? Well, I definitely don't eat it too often. I might take a little scraping and it might go into a smoothie. But for the most part, I like to actually take the meat out of here and then either uh, make it into coconut milk, which is number one. I could make it into coconut cream or I can make it into coconut butter. And I do have other videos on YouTube because I'm not gonna get it into those functions in this video, but those are the things I do with it. Uh, there's so many different things you can do. One of the biggest questions I get is, hey John, how do you get the coconut meat out so that you can use it to you know, turn it into coconut shreds if you just uh, 
put it through a juicer with a blank plate and then shred it up and then put it in your dehydrator. Well, I have a special tool for almost everything and I have a special tool for getting the meat out. Now, if you're interested in either of these tools here, they are available on the website youngcoconuts.com. So to use this tool, it's very simple. We're gonna go ahead and move some of this stuff out the way so I could show you guys. Uh, you always wanna be safe when using these, uh, both these tools they actually have nice sharp edges on them. So what I like to do for this tool is I like to hold the coconut against the table and uh, you're basically going to uh, shove this in between the coconut and the shell. So I'm going to hold it against the table and shove that in there just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, kind of twist the hand like this as we're rotating the coconut around to uh, force this between the shell all the way around the whole coconut. So I'm continuing to work this tool uh, between the shell and the coconut meat and I'm rotating the uh, coconut to go all the way around it and I'm kind of rocking my hand back and forth just uh, very slowly and very methodically to get the whole coconut out now you can't get this out in pieces but it's a challenge of mine every single time I do this to get it out in one whole piece because it looks cool so uh, let's see if we can go ahead and do that for you guys I'm working at it and check it out once you got it right you could actually just pull this whole piece of coconut out now you might be thinking, hey John, how come it's not all white? Well, you know, this is part of the uh, coconut shell still stuck to it. And this is completely edible, it's just extra fiber. If you're using some kind of culinary, you know, thing and you don't want any brown coloring in your stuff, you know, I usually just blend this up or shred it up. Just take a knife or take a peeler and you can just peel that stuff right off so you just have that white coconut that you're looking for. In any case, uh, this makes a nice little bowl to serve things in or, you know, I would actually take and grind this up with the juicer with the blank plate in it into pieces and then uh, shred it up and then actually put it in the dehydrator and then you'll have fresh coconut shreds now the fresh coconut shreds you make in your dehydrator with fresh coconut like this taste nothing like the ones you buy in the store the ones in the store basically have the fat taking out of it and they taste to me like kind of like cardboard nowadays after making my own because the ones that you make have the full fat content the other thing that you may want to be aware of if you do make dehydrated coconut shreds they may last three to six months before going rancid. How will you know if they turn rancid? Open the jar up and smell. If it smells nice and coconutty, then they're fresh. If it smells funky, then toss them or compost them. Now, the other thing I could do is actually just take this and I'd actually put it in the blender, uh, both halves actually, with uh, 32 ounces of water, blend that up into a nice mixture and then put it through a nut milk bag or I like to use my Omega Vert juicer to make a delicious coconut milk. So, uh, and then, uh, also, you'll have like a little bowl here that you can use if you get it out in one piece. You could actually uh, sand this out and shellac it and have little bowls to store stuff in. Or just compost it. Now the brown coconut is pretty much used the same way as the white one. If we open the brown one, the meat's not going to be quite as uh, flexible as this. It's going to be more mature and crack a lot easier. That's because there's a lot level higher of fat. So if you're going after and want to eat more coconut oil because of the benefits of coconut oil, I recommend you eat actually the more mature brown coconuts and eat the meat out of that. I don't like to take extracted oils. Extracted oils are 100% fat, 120 calories per tablespoon. And in the coconut uh, flesh, you're going to get the oil plus the fiber and all the other nutrients that are contained within. If you do want to make a coconut cream, then what you would do is you would actually uh, use the more mature or the brown coconuts to actually put this through your juicer and only certain juicers will do this. Uh, such as the single auger juicers or the twin gear juicers and you're going to put the uh, chunks and you got to cut them smaller don't put large chunks in uh, chunks of uh, coconut through your machine it'll really squeeze out the nice rich fatty cream out of it if you want to make a coconut butter what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take out the meat shred it up dehydrate it and then you're going to actually take those shreds and put it through your juicer with a blank plate once again a single auger or a dual gear juicer works best to grind that all up into the best coconut uh, butter you've ever had. So there's many different products you can make with the coconuts and I've made a lot of them. Uh, be sure to check my other YouTube videos about coconuts uh, to learn more about some of the ways that I use the coconuts personally. I think they're an excellent source of saturated fat because saturated fat is not in most uh, plant-based diets because that's usually from animal products so this is one source of it. Now, while we don't need, and saturated fat is not an essential fat like omega-3s or omega-6s are, you know, I believe it can be beneficial, especially if you're not getting enough because saturated fat 
uh, from my experience has a direct impact on my cholesterol level, which is the master hormone, which creates things like testosterone and other hormones. So I like to keep a good level of saturated fat, but not too much because too much of any good thing is probably a bad thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode learning more about which coconut is best. And once again, it depends on what you need to do with it. Personally, these guys are my favorite, except when I'm in the tropics and get them right off the tree. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best.